Good morning, everybody. Um, and thank you for joining us this morning on this, the third Sunday of Advent. Welcome to those of you not only in church, but also those of you joining us on Zoom and those watching the service later on YouTube. A special welcome to the people who've come for Hope's christening and, of course, the biggest welcome for Hope herself. I hope you will enjoy the fellowship of worshipping with us. We also welcome our new minister-elect, Dr. Connor Fegan, who's sitting over there, um, who joins us today in worship. Uh, one of our Advent traditions is the memory tree. And if you haven't already done so, please pick up a card from the box in the vestibule and write on it the names of any loved ones whom you particularly remember at this time of year. You can either hang it on the tree after the service or bring it back next week. And I'm sorry, this is quite a long intimations. Um, as you will have noticed, we've resumed the practice of recording the names of and contact details of those attending our services. This is in line with recommendations from the Church of Scotland COVID-19 group, which followed the protocol proposed by the Scottish Government. It's also recommended that we remind worshippers of the flow before you go principle whereby people take a lateral flow test before going out and stay at home if it proves positive. If you have access to these tests which are readily available at any pharmacy, we would ask you to take one prior to attending church. And if the result's positive, please join us online. While there is, no, while there is currently no longer a legal requirement to maintain social distancing between households in church, there is a recommendation from the Church of Scotland that, that congregations should continue to observe this. We would be grateful if you would do so. The Kirk Session of Mark Inch and Thornton Parish Church administers the Annie Jimison Trust, which grants assistance to elderly people who've lived in Mark Inch Parish continuously for at least 15 years. Its purpose is to help individuals to meet the cost of food and winter heating. In the early days, coal was delivered direct to an applicant's door, and they visited the grocer's shop selected by the session and received a parcel of food. Nowadays, applicants are paid by cheque. The trust refers to aged persons, and the Kirk Session has defined this to mean anyone of an age to receive the government retirement pension. It also refers to beneficiaries as being poor, this is treated as meaning those on a basic pension and perhaps qualifying for income support. A means test is not applied. Anyone wishing to apply should contact Brian Gould, the session clerk, to request an application form, and I know he's got them. The closing date for applications is next Sunday, the 19th of December. Glenrothes Area Food Bank still needs donations. Any contributions to the box in the vestibule will be gratefully received. During Advent, we'll also be collecting for Glenrothes Women's Aid. There will be a collection box in the vestibule for any donations of toiletries or children's items can be placed. The congregation is now permitted to stand and sing during services. If you choose to sing, please remember that you must still wear a face covering. Sunday school teachers are grateful for the congregation's support of their sponsored Ethiopian child, Surafel. Please continue to drop any spare change in the tin in the vestibule. The six churches in the Glenrothes Area Covented Partnership are now holding a weekly prayer group via Zoom on Thursdays at 7 o'clock. Details of how to join this are on the poster in the vestibule and also on our Facebook page and website. The partnership is also holding a series of Advent study evenings over Zoom every Sunday through to next Sunday the 19th at 6.30. Details on how to join these events are on the flyer which can be picked up in the vestibule and are also published on our Facebook page and website. There will be a watch night service in Markinch Church at 11.30 on Christmas Eve. There will be no service in either Markinch or Thornton on Christmas Day. 
but services will be held in both our churches on Boxing Day, Sunday the 26th, at the usual times. Our fellow members of the Covenant Partnership are also holding services at various times over the Christmas season. Again, details are on the poster in the vestibule and will also be on our Facebook page and website. After this morning's service, there will be a congregational Christmas meal in the church hall at the cost of eight pounds. Marianne Sankey has said to me that if you haven't got tickets and you would still like to attend, there are places. Uh, the Presbytery of Fife have informed us that they plan to hold the service of ordination and induction of our minister-elect, Dr. Conor Fegan, in Mark Inge Church on Thursday the 20th of January at seven o'clock in the evening. These are the only details which we have at the moment, but please keep this date in your diary. If you will require assistance with transport in order to attend, please let one of the duty elders know. On leaving, please leave the white slip that was in your hymn book where you were sitting. This will help with cleaning and sanitizing of the pews and please leave your hymn book on the table in the vestibule. Finally, please continue to observe social distancing when you leave church. I'm afraid that's the end. Thank you. <laughs> this is the third Sunday in Advent. St. Paul bids us rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Come ye before this, and, and we sing the first hymn, which is Psalm 100, which is hymn number 63. Hymn 63, all people that on earth do dwell, come ye before him and rejoice.
Let us pray. God of eternity, when the voice of the prophet fell silent and the faith of your people was low, when darkness had obscured light and indifference displaced, displaced zeal, you saw that the time was right and prepared to send your Son, set us free from fear and faithlessness that we may be ready to welcome him who comes as Saviour and Lord. Blessed Jesus, God's child, born of Mary, you have brought joy to the world and we wait to celebrate this again. Forgive us those times when in the trochel of life we have felt stirrings of joy but have stifled it as too good to be true. Forgive us when we have refused to rejoice in the good fortune of another. Forgive us when we have envied other people who are experiencing joy we cannot have. And forgive us when we have ignored the gift of small joys which you have placed in our way and held out for a greater. Help us to believe and trust that no wrong we have done, no good we have failed to do, is too great for your pardon. God, forgive us and make us new. Who are we, Lord God, that you should come to us? Yet you have visited your people and redeemed us in your Son. As we prepare to celebrate his birth, make our hearts leap for joy at the sound of your word and move us by your Spirit to bless your wonderful works. We ask this through him whose coming is certain, whose day draws near your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be you thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We sing the first two verses, the first two verses of hymn 632, Our Children Lord in Faith and Prayer.
please be seated. We're now going to administer the sacrament of holy baptism for Hope Catherine Muldoon, the daughter of Michael and Emma. But what does this mean? After his resurrection, Jesus said to his disciples, full authority in heaven and earth has been committed to me. Go forth therefore and make all men and women my disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all that I have taught you, and be assured that I will be with you always to the very end of time. Therefore, when people became Christians, they were baptized. That is, they went down under the water and came up again. No, I don't, 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 don't leave, don't leave, just. This meant they went down under the water and came up again. The church no longer baptizes by total immersion, but the meaning is still the same. It means that we are to live as God's children in his family, the church. It declares that God gives us the Holy Spirit as the guarantee of eternal life. And today God our Father calls hope by name to enter into this inheritance. But since a little child cannot understand this for herself, at this time her parents and we the members of the church must promise to bring her up in the Christian faith so that she has every opportunity for herself to follow Jesus and serve him as a member of his church. Michael and Emma, will you please stand? Michael and Emma, you have brought your daughter Hope for baptism. The step you're about to take is a very important one. I will be asking you questions and you will be giving me answers, but you won't be giving the answers directly to me. You're talking to God at this point. You're making the promises to him and therefore it makes it important. In that knowledge, I ask you, Michael and Emma, do you earnestly intend, depending on God's grace, to bring hope up in the Christian faith? Do you confess with us your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? And do you promise to tell hope all about Jesus and his love and for us and all people? And will you encourage her to study the life of Jesus and follow him all the ways of her life? Godparents, will you stand please? As Godparents, do you promise that you will love and care for Hope as she grows up from childhood to adulthood? And will you do all that you can to help support Michael and Emma? Thank you. And you, the members of the church, will you please stand? As part of the family of God's church in this place, you too have a responsibility to help this child and all children grow in the, the knowledge and love of Almighty God. Wherever we welcome, a, whenever we welcome a new Christian, we remember our own baptism, the beginning of a journey into maturity with Christ. Do you promise to renew your vows at baptism and under, undertake to live the Christian life, to proclaim the good news by word and deed, by love, serve and com communities, and pray for the he healing and peace of the world. You may answer, we do if you do. Thank you. We're now going to say the words of the, the Apostles' Creed. It begins, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated on the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father, as we celebrate the sacrament which your Son ordained, we ask that you bless us now and confirm what we do in your name. Bless this water to its spiritual use and grant that this child may be born again of water and the Holy Spirit and that she will remain in the number of your faithful children. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know where to leave anything. Take that for me. Don't run off with it. I need it. Can we have hope now, please? I've always got hope. Well, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> I think what we'll do, hope, hope. <laughs> will we do daddy first? <laughs> See, watch this, hope. <laughs> Hope's turn. Hope I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I've quite lost the place now. Hope has been accepted into God's church by baptism, and on your behalf, I welcome her. Thomas, come and read for us. You're going to get a microphone first, so just stand here. You've been a special blessing since the day that you arrived, bringing so much happiness and filling hearts with pride. And now that it's your baptism day, this brings a special prayer that God will always keep you in the shelter of his care. Thank you very much. Oh, don't put it down there, get wet. <laughs> Thanks. Emma, thank you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Let us pray. Please be seated. Father God, we praise you for all that you have done for all of us. And we thank you for declaring your love for hope. As you have loved her from the beginning, so continue to protect and guide her. May she become a loyal disciple of Jesus Christ. Help Michael and Emma and us and all the members of the church to give children security and freedom and by our love for them show the meaning of your love. Whether we are young or old, we ask together that you make our baptism real and complete so that we may live together in the joy of the, and the power of the Holy Spirit and at the last live forever 
in your presence. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing the concluding two verses of the baptismal hymn. first lesson is taken from the letter to the Philippians at chapter 4 and at verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything, by prayer and petition, petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And the Gospel, St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 3, and at verse 7. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees. And every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then? The crowd asked. John answered, the man with two tunics should share with him who has none, and the one who has food should do the same. Tax collectors also came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Christ. 
John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and preached the good news to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I do like Sundays that have names. It stops each Sunday being the same old thing. Oh, except they aren't really the same, I mean, are they? Because every week we hear some fresh teaching from the Bible, like one of the Old Testament prophets, shining a spotlight on an aspect of modern life. How on earth do they know so far back? Or some pithy and entertaining sayings from the book of Proverbs. Or a love story with a message, like the book of Ruth, marrying across a racial divide. Or maybe a tense moment in Galilee, when vigilante Pharisees menace the table that Jesus is eating at with outcasts and rough sleepers. Or these troublesome apostles in Acts being arrested for a breach of the peace. Or maybe a punchy para from Paul in one of these letters which burn a hole in your pocket or a futuristic graphic novel from Revelation which looks gobbledygook but is actually a coded message to desperate Christians which promises the time will come when minorities will be free to follow their religion and culture without persecution. But this Sunday also has a special name. It is Gaudete Sunday. And if you tell me you have no idea what that is about, what about this? Gaudete, Gaudete, Christus est natus, ex Maria Virginae, Gaudete, 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 Christus est natus, ex Maria Virginae. That was Steel I Span from 1973, remember anyone? And they're singing their version of a 16th century Advent carol, Rejoice, Rejoice, Christ is Born of the Virgin Mary. Why this is called Gaudete Sunday is because in earlier times, worship began with the very passage that we heard from the letter to Philippi. Gaudete, that is, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. And today it was the first thing we heard as worship began. And didn't our psalm call us to come before him and rejoice. And I'm looking forward later to when we sing that catchy number from the Cameroons that we rehearsed earlier, he came down that we will have joy. Actually, there are three joy Sundays every year. This one, one in Lent, one just after Easter. And they all begin, the first words you hear, with the word rejoice each with a different verse from the Bible, beginning that way. Yet, these three joys are all different kinds of joy, taking their special nature from the season. 
difficult, different qualities of joy that we too experience in our lives. Today's joy is the joy of anticipation. Waiting for Christmas to come and its promise of peace on earth and goodwill between individuals, communities, races and peoples. As we've been hearing from Alistair these last two Sundays, Advent is a demanding and disturbing season, calling us to reflect on a world of disasters. But this third Sunday is a bit of a breather. It's a relaxation of the mood. As we briefly remind ourselves what we believe the world will be like when things are done Christ's way. When balance is restored between rich and poor, justice done, people reconciled, and that keeps us going. So our joy in Advent is the joy of anticipation, of something we almost can't wait to happen. We know those kind of joys, or this kind of joy. The joy of reading through a novel and getting through all the misunderstandings in the middle, but you just know that the couple are going to get together in the end. Or a police procedural on television as you approach the last half hour, knowing that all is about to become clear. Or like being at a rock concert, anyone? As the warm-up acts prepare the way for the headline band. Or sitting through the clashings in the middle of a symphony, knowing that the main melody will be coming back gloriously at the end. The Advent joy is the joy of anticipation. It's the joy of hearing the rescuers approach, of going to hear news you know is going to be good, of seeing beyond the comfort, the discomforts of pregnancy to the new person who is to going to be. It's going through a sticky patch with a spouse, a parent or adolescent, knowing that there is enough of an undercurrent of love for reconciliation to become inevitable in time. And it is the knowledge even at the times of spiritual darkness when no prayer is possible. That God is a God who in his own time will raise us up. Gaudete, rejoice. Yet what about the times when we can barely manage a brave smile? What about the little ends of the world situations that punctuate our existence? What about the domestic disaster, or the times we feel friendless, the collapsing business, the blackness of bereavement. Be always joyful. Really? A tall order and no mistake. And you and I are suspicious of those who say, cheer up, it could be worse, or you'll soon get over it, you'll see. Remember Willie McFlannel and the Scottish Home Service at 7.25 every Saturday night? You never died a winter yet. And we wonder if they really understand. There are times, of course, when we're grateful even for that, recognising the shared faith beneath the words, the shared humanity, knowing how much more is being said and deriving deep comfort. It is so difficult to find words of support and comfort for others in a bad place. And it is so good that we try. What 
Christian joy is not. It's a Christian presence that all is well. That if you just ignore the setbacks, the bad patches, even genuine illness is something, they'll go away. Nor is it the joy that is determined to have a good time, to forget the problems, to seek oblivion in partying, whether in number 10 or anywhere else, to take refuge in drugs or alcohol, or laugh or that laughter at others' expense that stereotypes, distances and divides people from other people. This mid-Advent joy is the respite in the gloom. It says, keep at it, hang on, keep taking the medication, dig down to find that extra bit of energy, that last bit of love. Keep trying to make a society where all are equally valued and supported. Keep trying to heal the world. Keep your COP26s going, your echo congregations, keep supporting the charities, encouraging negotiators, keep voting for politicians whose horizons are broad and compassionate, keep right on to the end of the road. When you're tired and you're weary, still journey on. And I only learned this week that these words of the entertainer Sir Harry Lauder was written by him three days after hearing his son had been killed in the First World War. Keep on, for the Lord is near. As St. Paul says, rejoice. But, friends, this Sunday has another title, special to us at St. Droston's Mark Inch. Today can also be called Hope Sunday, or Hope's Sunday, who has been baptised today. And the title that gives us couldn't be more apt. Because in Advent, we wait in hope for the peace and goodwill promise that Christmas brings. The baptism of hope today reminds us why we as Christians are able to rejoice even in the dark times, even when the promise is still distant. There are a lot of myths around baptism I heard they thrived better, said a parent in my first parish. But baptism is not something that's immediately effective. It's the beginning of a journey. A journey towards maturity that begins with the care of parents and the support of godparents, but also a journey in relation to the church where baptised people grow into what St. Paul calls the maturity that is Jesus Christ. That maturity is about learning to love, something we go on learning all through our lives. The church is a school of love. The Advent joy is knowing that we are loved by God, as shown in baptism. In every setback or disaster, we can still rejoice in our waiting because we are loved as God showed his love for hope today in her naming as one of Jesus' family. Baptism is the beginning of a journey. And for all of us who are baptized, this is a day when to use digital jargon, we hit the reset button and renew our quest as we get on our own path of discipleship back on track. So today, two journeys through Advent with a breather today and the journey towards love, 
peace and joy in our hearts begun at baptism. The proclaimers of Ochtermachti captured this so well in one of their best-known songs. And since this is a joy Sunday, let's hear it. By surprise, Douglas. <laughs> We're going to sing hymn three five nine. He came down that we may have love, peace, and joy. Hymn three five nine. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we thank you for your gift of children, for the joy, the laughter, and the fun they bring in so many ways. We thank you for their innate zest for life, the interest, excitement, and fascination they find in so much that we count ordinary. We thank you for their special qualities, their innocence, their trust, their enthusiasm, their energy, and the sheer hunger to learn. And we lift them up to you now. Almighty and gracious God, we pray for hope this day, presented to you this day, and for all children everywhere, so precious to us, so precious to you. Sometimes they're abused, sometimes they are starved, sometimes they are murdered. Watch over them, protect them, guide them and bless them. And we lift them up to you now. Hear also our prayer for those who are childless or who long to conceive another child Reach out to them in their pain and frustration, their disappointment, their anger. Help them not to lose hope until all hope is past. And if that time finally comes, give them the comfort that you alone can bring. 
and courage to channel their love to those around them. We lift them up to you now. And finally, we pray for disadvantaged children, those who are disabled, those who are abused, those who are orphaned, undernourished, and loved and wanted. So many denied the start in life that they deserve and the care that they need. We lift them up to you now. Loving God, you welcomed little children demonstrating their importance to you, their special place in your heart. Prosper the work of all who care for children today, all who strive to give them a better life, a brighter future, a safer world in which to grow. Use them and us to make real your care for all. We lift them up to you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Loving Father, we bring to you too our offerings this morning, a mere token of our giving of ourselves. Bless this money that it might be used to bring about your kingdom, not only here, but throughout the world. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is hymn 529. Forth in thy name, O Lord, I go. The tune, Duke Street. <coughs> Rejoice in the Lord always, I say again, rejoice. The peace of the Lord, of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and wherever you go. Amen. Amen.